Welcome in, everyone, to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Tommy Brzee. It is May 8th, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to start talking a little bit more about the spring portal and talk about how there are some very, very good signs from it in terms of roster retention and things of that nature. I want to break down a couple of different examples of kids that decided to stay put that, um, we did not expect to stay put, I'll put it that way. Um, and then we have a busy, busy uh, coaching cycle over the last little bit, over the last couple of months. There's been a ton of coaching movement. I feel like it's been the most active that I can remember, at least. So I want to break down that, give you guys an idea of where the head coaches are, where some of the biggest coordinator hires were, where some of the big, biggest uh, position coach hires were. So want to break down all of that uh, for you guys, give you guys an idea of who's going to be on the sidelines for some of your favorite teams and some of your rivals this off or this fall. And then we'll get back into spring overreactions. We'll go back to the Big Ten. I have a couple more that I want to throw out there today for you all. And then we'll finish it off with a Spotlight Wednesday. And we'll get into the Ole Miss Rebels. A ton riding on the season with a big-time transfer portal class coming in. So I wanted to break down kind of what my thoughts are for their season. But Before we jump in, I do want to remind you all we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show, and the best way for you all to get your question on the screen, have a fun back and forth here, maybe ask something you were wondering about, maybe call me out on something I didn't uh, bring up, you can use the link at the bottom of the screen, gsmcpodcast.net. It's a huge help not only to us here at the network, but to you all. You get to have a fun little interactive experience here and think it's fun for the both of us. So definitely use that link if you want to, gsmcpodcast.net. Podcast.net. But let's jump right in and let's talk about this spring portal cycle. I think a lot of us leading up to this, including myself, were being very, very wary of this spring portal cycle. I think it was something that a lot of people, including coaches, were very, very worried about. I told that story that Josh Pate told on his show that was very eerie of a entire uh, position room being essentially out the door during spring and that staff knowing exactly who they're replacing that position group with um, and those guys being on other rosters. That really didn't come to fruition. At least I have not been able to pin down what position room that would have been. So I don't think there was this big tsunami that I think some of us expected. So very happy that that was the case. And I think it kind of gives us an idea of what the future of the portal is going to look like. This is something that Chip Patterson over at CBS talked about in um, an article recently, and it's a very interesting concept because all of us have been so worried about the portal, and I think we all know at this point it's going to play a part in college football going forward. There's kind of no way around that. It's going to play a rather big part, right? Uh, People are going to be active in those portal cycles, and it's just going to be the way of things for quite some time. But it feels like there is a certain level, I suppose, that uh, that we're finding with it. It's sort of starting to kind of plateau, and I think there's a number of different reasons for that. And I think the big-time one, obviously, is we now have collectives that know what the deal is around NIL. I think the first couple of years, there were this big confusion, big, like, race for arms, I suppose, just trying to figure out what their structure was going to be for NIL and how they were going to utilize NIL going forward. Now you have your teeth fully sunk into that you fully understand what is required of you on that end of things and you also know what you're willing to give up for some of these players we heard plenty of stories of whether it was defensive tackles or running backs or whomever that were getting 1.5 or 2 million dollar offers and then some schools would drop out because they're not willing to pay 1.5 or 2 million dollars for someone that's a rental, essentially, for a year or for two years, depending on what the situation is. So I think that's part of this. I I think coaches and athletic departments overall are becoming a little bit smarter about the way that they go about the portal. I think they're being a little less panicked when they go into the portal. I think they're not using NIL money as willy-nilly as they did in the past. I think they're being a little bit more deliberate about the way they go about things. But also, I think this plays into a ton of just roster management and a ton of just the kids in college football and in in every sport pretty much across college sports just becoming a little bit smarter about what the portal means for them. So we've watched the portal over the last couple of years and there's been very few 
examples of the portal that haven't been shown at this point, right? The, the different ways that you can use it, the different ways that it can go wrong for you if you do use it incorrectly. And I think that plays a huge part into some of the decisions that were made, especially this uh, cycle. We had a couple of guys in particular decide to go back to their teams. We had many more that never entered the portal, but definitely flirted with the idea that we're just probably never here about to be totally honest with you but I wanted to highlight two guys that in particular decided to go back to their teams for <clears throat> a myriad of reasons but at the end of the day it kind of gives you an idea of what we were under during this uh, spring portal cycle so Jay Toia is a very very talented defensive tackle at UCLA and he entered the portal um, during the spring cycle and visited Texas and it, Texas was very much after this kid definitely wanted him on the roster and then he decided to go back to UCLA. There was some talk about NIL being a factor there, but at the end of the day, he found his way back to uh, UCLA after Texas was very much after him. So I think that gives you an idea of kind of where his head was at, at least initially. And then you had Decario Davis, a guy that has been in the portal since January and just never really found a place that felt better than Arizona. So he found his way back to Arizona. Is going to be a fantastic player, one of the top corners taken in the next year's draft. So huge for Arizona, but also just huge for college football and college sports in general. And I think um, there's many other examples, I'm sure, of kids that flirted with the idea. We heard about Christian Miller over at UGA uh, flirt with the idea, never actually came to fruition. There were Bear Alexander at U uh, USC was another one that we heard rumors but never came to fr uh, fruition. So I think there's a lot of different things that went into that. I think some of it is, you know, the monetary value of possibly staying at the place you're at compared to <clears throat> going somewhere else. But also, I do think there is this level of kids just understanding what the portal is. And I think you look around a ton of different examples across the last three or four years when the portal has really, really taken over college football, and you can find infinite amount of examples of kids who either entered the portal and were right back in it almost immediately. I mean, we talked about Caden Proctor this spring a ton because it is a cautionary tale for what the portal can be and how um, utilizing it kind of whenever you'd like is not necessarily the best way to go about business. Now Caden Proctor is back at Bama and hopefully he, you know, sets his feet and is plenty happy there, but it gives you an idea of just what this can be instead of, you know, what it looks like from the outside, which is obviously candy and rainbows and it looks like an incredible thing where you're going to be able to go to a school, be, you know, a starter and be a star and and make, you know, millions of dollars. That's not always what's on the other side. Uh, so I think that's the, the big thing that players have learned is the grass isn't always greener. There's always, um, <clears throat> there's a reason that you committed to the school that you committed to. And whether it's, you know, the coach, if the coach leaves, then I have full understanding if someone wants to leave the program. Because in a lot of these scenarios, kids commit to coaches, they don't commit to programs, which it's kind of an interesting thought, but that's just kind of the way that recruiting has worked for the last couple of years. And I think um, that is one example where cannot blame the kid by any means. I think I fully understand that. But also, you commit to a program for a reason. You commit because you like the town, you like the, the way the program works, you like the energy around the stadium, whatever it is. I just think kids are starting to understand that Maybe it's better to stick it out for a year or two while things are, you know, a little bit slower and you're trying to work your way into the lineup and all of this different stuff. And then once you get there, being able to burst onto the scene and be totally comfortable and all of this different stuff, instead of transferring out, finding a new place to play and realizing I'm right where I started at that other place. I just would have been deeper into the playbook and deeper into relationships there and just having my feet set a little bit better. So I think there's a lot of um, great things to pull from this. I think when you look at the kids today and you look at what's kind of going on in the transfer portal, we've seen tons of success stories. And it's been incredible to see some of these kids find a new place to play and absolutely explode because talent is you know off the charts in this sport. And we've seen it across the board where there's been incredible stories. But also... There's been tons of cautionary tales. There's been dangerous things that have happened for kids that have gone to the portal, whether that's, you know, just falling off essentially the face of the earth when we talk about college football because you just didn't find the right place to play or leaving a place that 
probably was the better place for you uh, for everything but football. But then you got uh, to tunnel tunnel vision, I suppose, about football and the future there that you forgot about the rest of uh, the reality of college and of life in general where football is going to end. Um, and I think there's this uh, there's been this big push over the last couple of years of you know, the portal is there to be used, right? And uh, people have really used it uh, and used it to a degree that I think is really dangerous. And I think we can all kind of agree on that to a certain extent. I think there are certain people that believe it's a better entity than others. I'm somewhere in the middle, to be totally honest with you, because there are stories that are just remarkable. You know, Jalen Hurts getting a chance to go to Oklahoma and have the year that he had his senior year is incredible. Baker Mayfield finding his way to Oklahoma as well. Oklahoma was kind of the starter of all of this craziness. But overall, I mean, there's just been incredible stories across the country of kids being able to find their footing somewhere else. But it doesn't work out that way all the time. Uh, and mistakes will be made going forward. There's no two ways about that. The transfer portal will be a huge part of college football going forward. There's no two ways about that. But at the end of the day, it feels like there is a full understanding of what we're dealing with now. And uh, there wasn't when we first you know, introduced it and gave essentially free reign to the players. There wasn't an understanding of what this entity was and how it really worked and what was on the other side of it for a lot of these kids. And not only that, but what teams could tell you and what teams could do behind closed doors was a big gray area. Um, And it feels like players are starting to wise up. It feels like teams are starting to wise up to a certain extent that some of these players that are in the portal, they're in the portal for a reason. Whether it's, you know, they couldn't quite get on the field at their former place or they're looking for money in some of these cases or... It just, you know, wasn't a good fit at the other play. Whatever it is, you have to be wary of pretty much anyone that's changing schools. And that's not to, you know, tear down any of these kids for making that decision because they absolutely should be able to. And I fully support them in whatever they choose to do. But at the end of the day, you do have to, you know, do your homework and be careful. And some teams have been less careful than others. Some teams have been overly cautious, like Clemson over there. But we can get to them on another day. But... I just think in general, when you look across the sport and you look at what the transfer portal has become, there's so much worry around it. There's so much hectic energy around what the portal is and how we deal with it and how it's handled by these players. But I think we're starting to see that a really hectic entity is starting to be kind of reeled in just because people understand what it is and they understand how to handle it and they understand what the pitfalls are and that Once you go into that portal, there are some programs that just won't let you back in. So I know Texas is one of them. Steve Sarkeesian has said time and again, if you're in that portal, you are no longer a Texas Longhorn, and that's just kind of the way things work. Um, And I fully understand that approach. I also fully understand the approach of letting a kid get back in. But at the end of the day, there is a reality where this was going to roll down the hill and become more and more dangerous for these kids, and more and more kids were going to get taken advantage of. But it feels like, more than anything, it feels like the players are starting to understand what the pitfalls are, what the dangers are, and the teams are starting to understand there are, you know, you are threading a needle by going into the portal and finding some of the big-time players for your team. So it'll be fascinating to watch if this is something that continues to happen where you see less guys enter the portal than you once saw the past couple of cycles, or... You just see guys go in and and test the waters but come back out. Or um, who knows? Who knows what the future of the portal looks like? It's always a a very tricky entity to pin down. But at the end of the day, it feels like we're at a place where the teams know what they're doing. The players know what they're doing. The transfer portal itself is still a wild entity, and it's definitely still going to be a weird thing going forward. But it feels like we have an understanding, and it feels like college football is going to be okay at the end of the day. It feels like the the past couple of years, there's been a lot of doomsday talk around the transfer portal, and if anything does college football in, I don't think it'll be the transfer portal. So we've gotten to a a resting point. We've gotten to a plateau. Um, We will definitely still keep our eye on the transfer portal for sure because It gets sketchy quickly, we know that, Um, but at the end of the day, it feels like players are just starting to understand that 
maybe the transfer portal isn't quite the way that they want to go about business. But we'll find out if that holds and if that continues down the road. But this spring cycle is definitely a very, very good thing to see. But let's take our first break. And when we come back, let's talk about the busiest coaching cycle I have seen in ever, to be totally honest with you. So tons of guys moving around. Want to give you guys a little roundup on where everyone is, who you're going to be facing, who you're uh who's going to be coaching your favorite team in some positions, some different things that I want to break down. So stick with us and we'll be right back with that. 